answering your comments about my non-alcoholic brewing miniseries. If you watched my first part of the alcoholic miniseries and you did comment down below, you may have noticed that I didn't answer you and I tried to answer all comments. But as this was to be like a learning experience from the viewers and all of your experience together, I thought I should read some comments and comment on them now. And I can ask even further question to you guys about your thoughts about brewing non-alcoholic beers. Today we also have two new alcoholic beers. We have the NAPA, non alco Pale Ale from Sigtuna Craft Brewery, Swedish brewery, and also from Sweden from Gotlands Bryggeri. This is the Easy Rider Bulldog non-alcoholic IPA. In my first episode I talked about the three different ways I thought we should start with. And uh, just to sum it up, but you could go and watch that video of course, but to sum it up, first idea was to do like a nano state brew when you just do like specialty malts and some fermentables. And another way was heating after the fermentation to drive over the alcohol. And the third way was to use a yeast that don't really produce alcohol. And I talked about some varieties on those three examples of brewing alcohol beers. I also talked about other ways to do it. And I got a lot of comments, both here on YouTube and also on social media. I try to gather as most as possible, but uh, I'm gonna draw some from memory also. But first off, let's get those puppies into a glass. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. If you want to learn with me how to become better at beer and brewing, consider becoming a subscriber. And if you hit that bell, you will also get notifications when I put out a new video. And of course, it really helps out the channel if you would consider smashing that like button and of course, share this video. First off, I'm gonna get the puppy into a glass, but the puppies, yes. Big shout out to Brian Glover, yes, and I'm gonna like smash and destroy all of your names here, so sorry in advance. Big shout out to Brian Glover for, yes, uh, links to the Shiley's opener and glass we're using down in the descriptions. Brian Glover introduced me to a Facebook group, Non-Alcoholic Brewers. Excited about that, and uh, yeah, go over it there. If you're interested in brewing non-alcoholic beers, head over to the non-alcoholic brewers. Well, I'll just link to that down below, cause uh, yeah, so you don't have to search for anything. There's already a lot of br people brewing these kind of beers. Okay, the Easy Rider Bulldog beer, and also both of these beers were suggested. Uh, that I should try. And there were some other suggestions also. We're gonna get into maybe those questions. Because, yeah, when I tried to collect everything into small pictures I could use for, for YouTube, I lost a lot of comments. But hopefully we will get most of them. So we have a pale ale and we have a IPA. And both of these were some viewers' favorites. The IPA is hazy and the pale ale is clear. Don't know how well you can see it out here. Uh, let's try the pale ale first. I'm not a big fan of this brewery, I must say, Sigtuna Brewery. But yeah, I will give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> smells, smells weird to me. And even though like, you aren't really interesting and really hyped on the non-alcoholic brewing series, give it a, give it a shot. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm not really like, stoked on brewing non-alcoholic beers. I'm more into brewing like sessionable beers, low ABV beers, more than non-alcoholic beers. But I think there's a lot of learn here and tools to put in our tool belt when brewing low ABV beers also. So, but, but what if, what if we would succeed to do a really awesome non-alcoholic beer? It is okay. It tastes a little warty, if you can say that. 
Elizabeth is weird. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be happy with, with that result. It's not that it tastes bad, but it's weird and it's warty. Two W's, weird and, weird and warty, yeah. Let's go for the other one. The Easy Rider Bulldog. That's better, that's better. That's way better. Did I say better? Better mouthfeel. It doesn't taste like wort. Still weird, but not as weird as that one. Let's get on with uh, the comments. Also, big shout out to today's sponsor, Brugolt. Brugolt is a Swedish homebrew supplier with their physical store here in Stockholm, Sweden. And a little bird whispered in my ear that the members are now getting to place pre-orders of some merchandise that I know that uh, some of you are really interested in, so you can check that out if you want to. And of course, this, this, the, the first shipment of Spandit should have arrived now, and uh, yeah, if you want to get one from the, the first shipment, do check them out or place a pre-order for shipment number two. Now when the bills are paid, let's go and answer your comments. Don't peek at my pin code. Where did I put them? And these are just in random orders. So let's see how this goes. And some questions may come up twice and some questions may be answered later when we come back to the topic and some questions need to be answered by you guys or need to be experimented with here on the channel. And as I said, I will butcher all your names. Simon Skidmore, great ideas for a series. I like the idea of brewing and fermenting some malt as normally, probably without hops, and then distilling, boiling off the alcohol. You can then boil your hops separately and add them back into the back set. Another method proposed by Breeze is mashing at fridge temp overnight and then boiling, hopping and fermenting as normal. The idea is that a low, where a low mash temp where a little starch conversion occurs and raising the temp quickly denatures the enzyme as quickly as possible. Um, I'd love to see this one put to the test. Yes, I heard of that also. Just by doing a, a cold mashing, like overnight in, in like a fridge temperature. And of course, you need to heat up that rapidly so the, the conversion really doesn't continue. Um, I don't know, we, we need to further dive into that one also, because that can really be an interesting way to try to brew it. If, like we say, if we're planning for a, like a five, it's a bird. If we're planning for like a five percent ABV, how much conversion do we have really? And uh, we could do like a second beer also with those grains. Yeah, interesting. Thank you. Next comment. Why not freeze distilling like an ice box, but recover the frozen beer instead of the liquid? Uh, I wouldn't do instead if I was trying to do that. I would really try to do both. But my experience with frozen stuff, both with mistakes in brewing and uh, from when I was a kid and we froze like lemonade, is that you will end like separate like the water and the, the flavors. And uh, I also seen this before, like it really shifts. So I think that we will lose a lot of flavor with that alcohol. I think that's a much better method for doing like an ice box rather than doing a non-alcoholic beer. But I haven't tried it, but that's what I think. And uh, if someone has tried, please comment down below. Next question. That was, did I say that, for, that was from Roy Morino. 
Shane Hansiker. I've done a couple of non-alcoholic brews using non-enzymatic, yeah, cold mashing. I'm still working on getting balance with the hops right, but I like it better so far than the small grain bill. Interesting. And uh, he also have a link to a blog. You can go and check that out. Look for the Shane Hansiker in the last video and you will see that uh, there's mosquitoes. Yeah, you're in the forest. Next comment. Mel Donahoe. Don't know if it's ever been done with beer, but you could boil over the alcohol <laughs> under a vacuum. It would, I would think it might not alter the flavor profile as much as heating it to boiling to the boiling point of uh, alcohol. Uh, it sounds complicated. I wish we could do something like that. Okay, so we need to like build a, a big <laughs> vacuum chamber where we can boil off and lead over the alcohol. It doesn't sound it doesn't sounds appropriate for uh, for home brewers, but yeah, uh, I would love to try it, but I don't think I will. Not in this mini series. That's like worth a, a series on its own. Actually, that build would be sick. Great comment, Marco M. I did a Naniste clone, but it turned out two percent ABV and tasted okay. Maybe better than the original. Yeah, I'm guessing that it would taste better than the original. Of course, 2% ABV to 0.5%. My best attempt was when I made wheat beer and sparge grain basket to different pot. Yes. Added some citron amarillo, boiled 30 minutes. OG was 10.10, FG was 10.05. I think that wheat gives good body to non-alcoholic beer. My favorite non-alcoholic alcohol beer is called Napa. Yes, Marco, I got one from your comments. Cheers. I didn't like it. Sorry, I, but I did. I, I preferred the Easy Rider Bulldog. I've got some more comments on, on what beer to get. Some are not available here, but some are. Uh, it's a wheat beer, we call it Edinburgh. <laughs> Smash that name also. And yeah, it will, it will come here. Yeah, and you can do a second uh, sparge, a sparge more and, and try to do a non alcoholic beer with that. It's a good idea. I've done something like that um, in a video called Is Over Sparging a Problem? Yeah, but that's another issue. Uh, yeah, and also, of course, there were some like random comments all over the place, mostly on social media. Uh, with someone, I tried like this method, method once, it didn't work, it doesn't work, I tried it once. If you try something once and it fails, maybe don't blame, blame it on the method, because yeah, all of these methods should really work, but maybe you have to do it in a different way and of course there was a lot of comments like waste of time that's called water and yeah, a lot of that and also there was some that would say I, I want to brew non alcoholic now and some comments like I want to, to brew a non-alcoholic beer for my friend who is a uh, non-alcoholic so he can join in and my friend asked me to brew non-alcoholic beer so he could drink one as well with the mates and of course good for alcoholics but there was also some people said that maybe non-alcoholic beers is also a way for alcoholics to get back on the wagon so uh, yeah I'm not like gonna judge here today but yeah there, there are, there are double sides of everything, two sides of the coin. Great for those who drive after barbecue. Yes, of course. Yes, because 
Yeah, barbecue without beer. Don't even get me started on that. Hardy Yards Brewers 1. I have brewed a non-alcoholic beer, doctor. I used the heat of the fermentation method in my grandfather, so fermented the beer. It was a low gravity, 3.2% beer to begin with. I gently siphoned the beer back to the sterilized and perch grandfather, then gently heated up to 78.5 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, then chilled through the wort chiller, caked and carved. It came out okay, but like you say, weird taste going on. It was pleasant, but weird. Yeah, maybe like the Napa, Marco. A Munich malt Amarillo hopped beer as the base Munich for body. We'll be watching your series with interest. Yes, yes it has a scroll, sorry about that. Cheers and good luck. Mike, I actually, Mike, I don't think 30 minutes at 78.5 degrees will drive off that much alcohol. We really need to find a way to know that the alcohol is gone if we are using like the heating method. So all tips on that are very well received. Can you say that? Now you can. Ian Cadmore, your option number three will not work. That's the heating method we were talking about. Alcohol forms an isotrope with water. You would have to boil the beer for some time. Yeah, that was what I was into also. To distill it, it would take roughly four hours in order to, to draw of the alcohol. That's probably a good starting point. Unfortunately, this results in terrible tasting wash afterwards. Suggesting that people do it this way is going to result in people consuming beer. They think it's non-alcoholic, alcoholic, but it's not. And that's not good. That's not good, Ian. Uh, yeah, we need to know, we need to measure this. You can't just let people heat it up to 78.5 degrees Celsius or that the, the good doctor can translate that into Fahrenheit thinking non-alcoholic beers. We need to like m find a good measurement or some reliable source or whatever yeah so please guys if you have any insight in this you say you say boil for four hours that sounds a lot to me but yeah magnus backer sjöbeck i'm brewing a gluten and alcohol free wort concentrate i use gluten free malt extract and boil it with less amount of water than usual and hops i boil it down to half volume and then filter it no yeast added uh, so no fermentation to me it sounds sweet and 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 warty uh, and it doesn't sound like beer if we don't add yeast don't have any fermentation thank you so much magnus i won't be trying that but yeah thank you for your input gabriel jigger here in florida we have what we call a florida weisse which is really just a fruited kettle sour a typical higher ABV. Some of these essential taste like fruit juice. I wonder if that could make a good NA beer. Yes, I think so. I think like a sour beer, a fruited sour beer is an awesome approach for a non-alcoholic beers. Like some of the best non-alcoholic beers has been fruited sour beers. Greed is good. My advice would be to make an IPA type of beer. The dry hopping and bitterness are great addition to mask a bit of the unfermentable sugars. Use a bit specialty malt to get the lowest amount of fermentable sugars. Sounds like nanny state approach for flavor and body. For fermenting you, you would need Saccharomyces cerevisiae var. Uh, Chevalier, fermented Saffel LA01 or Yes, uh, oh, he's also just talking about the, the, the yeast types that aren't like producing alcohols because we also have Saccharomycotes ludwigi which can't ferment maltose and maltotrosis. Maltotrose. Be sure to work as hygiene as possible for obvious reasons. 
There are some really good non-alcoholic beers available in the Netherlands at the moment. Playground IPA by Wanderstrek or Crybaby by Brewery to Ultje, Wamps and Napa. Yeah, that of course ain't the real name of the brewery. A sour beer is also good. Yes, a sour beer is good. Green Spoon DCFC. Be really interesting to see the outcome of the low alcohol yeast. Yeah, I think so too. I looked into using Sacra Marcodes Ludwigi, but decided not to go ahead mainly due to the cost of the yeast. Yes. Here's where I come in. I will use stupid stuff and spend a lot of money. So you don't have to. I do this experiment so you don't have to. But of course, to really help out by liking and sharing the video. And of course, there's also my Patreon page. If you want to support the channel and get like more content behind the scenes and get into the big Dr. Hans recipe book. Yes. And channel membership. Also put up some videos. Brian Bruce, I've done the low gravity method, about two pounds of specialty grains for a gravity of mosquito, 1006, came out exactly 0.5, it was a nanny state clone, okay, non-alcoholic amber IPA, Bruder published their recipe and for me this is the best method for homebrewers, also most scalable, yes, it's it's a very easy approach and it's very scalable. When heating a 5% beer, it takes 3 hours of sea level to off-gas the alcohol. You have to add water. Heating to what temperature, Brian? Maybe the vacuum chamber ain't that bad after all. I won't, I won't build it. Okay, Carl5728. I would appreciate if you, during this minute there, would test the 1664 Blanc sans alcohol. Yes, yes, I think that's available at the Systembolaget, the only store here in Sweden which sells alcohol beverages over 3.5%. So, yes, I will try it in this series. Oh, it's, it's weird. Also, the uh, IPA, they are both weird. But yeah, I do prefer the Easy Rider Bulldog IPA. Death Caps writes. I made a no boil session pale ale recently with all the hops in the mash. That was really nice. I think if you mashed with 30 to 50 grams of hops for bittering, say 30 to 40 IBU, fermented as normal, brought it back to the kettle and let it sit at 78C for 30 to 60 minutes to let the alcohol boil off, and did a big whirlpool addition during that time. Cool it back down and dry hop it for a day or two, you might be able to get like a sort of use IPA or something, maybe even with a hazy IPA with the right malts. It may be worth it to avoid boiling post-fermentation. Something tells me that boiled yeast won't taste good. Yeah, well, uh, I'm still nervous about like the, uh, the alcohol content left, of course, death caps. We need to, need to investigate this even further. I was thinking like, Boiling like 40 minutes should do it, but we got some comments here that said boiling for 60 minutes. I would love actually not to boil it at all, but yes, or like I said earlier, to do a normal fermentation, no boil, and then boil it for 60 minutes and do the hop additions. But yeah, we need to get this sorted before we try the heating method. Okay, Bradley Pariah, Pariah, sorry, I'm most intrigued about heating. Okay, back to the heating. That's basically distilling, but you're discarding the alcohol rather than discarding the beer. Yes, the idea is good. I've heard you can really mess yourself up if you do it indoors in a kettle with a lid off. Yeah, uh, I guess, yeah, you could really do that, I guess. So, yes, open all of your windows at least. I think a good way is to do it like in, in an oven, but yeah, you have to, maybe not. Maybe outside is better or open every, every window you have. Well, I'm guessing you will get sick. Here's the comment from Brian Glover that is super important, I think. And um, I also got a comment, I think it was on Facebook, said, this is really dangerous, don't do it. Uh, might kill you. <laughs> I don't think it will kill me, but 
let's be serious here. Something to keep in mind, Brian wrote, is that there's not enough alcohol to kill bugs like uh, C. Butylinium, butylinium and in the low gravity or lazy yeast method. Okay. To combat that, I acidified to a pH of 4.4 after shilling and before pitching the yeast. Also, depending on the method and if bottling, you should pasteurize the bottles after capping. I know you keg, so you might, you may be not a concern. We had a variety of promising results with cold mashing and cook off methods. The low grain method is my favorite so far. Okay, so he preferred like the nano state method, if I get you correct, uh, Bradley. But you also have good results with both mashing and cook off method. But Brian, now you're supposed to be like the Yoda here, so yeah, you need to like comment more on the, the video so everyone can read it. We just assigned you to be the Yoda, and for the rest of you, you must unlearn what you have learned. Hmm. Correct the pH to 4.4 and recommended pasteurization. That sounds nice, or that sounds like a good suggestion. So maybe we need to pasteurize these, and maybe that's why they are weird tasting. I don't know. Good pasteurized bottles. Why can't we pasteurize a keg? If we sink it down with something, I have smaller kegs also, we could pasteurize those. We could do some other experiment with pasteurization and beer. Yes, I will do that also. Pasteurized beer versus non pasteurized beers. But yeah, that's for all the other series, of course. Burnland Basement Brewery, nice. This is a subject that I've been thinking about several times. It would be nice to find home brewer variant that works okay, even though we're removing alcohol. Even thought of removing alcohol by freezing. Uh, yes, I have. It would be hard to know the ABV afterwards. Yes, it would be. And also, I think you will lose a lot of flavors. And yeah, because you're actually getting the good stuff first. So yeah, I think it's a better, I think that's a better way to do like an ice poker with a strong beer than the opposite. But please prove me wrong. Alexander Alasjö, interesting topic, looking forward to this series. Thank you, Alexander. What do the less alcohol producing yeast produce that may affect the flavor profile? I haven't used it yet, so, uh, but yeah, for you guys who have that, please comment down below on the strains you have used, on the flavor profile you have gotten from those strains, so we get a good starting point that was all the comments. Now it's up to you to, so we can like really dive into this topic of brewing non-alcoholic beers. So I really want to hear your input. So we go into this. We don't need to like rush into this. We need to do this like say like safe, and we need to do this smart so we don't waste so much time. I will waste most of the time as usual, of course. If you haven't already, consider becoming a subscriber. Do hit that little bell to get notifications when I put out a new video. And of course, smash that like button. If you didn't like this at all, hit the dislike button twice. Cheers and thanks for watching. Dr. Hans out.